The Committee on Parole is called back to order at a time that's 10.03 a.m. Members of the panel are Carl Wise, Alvin Roche, and Tony Marabello, who will be chairing today. Our remote location is at Caddo. With the staff at Caddo, please introduce themselves. Corporal Ronnie Jones. LaPasha Richardson Classification. Jail Commander Rick Ferris. Thank you. With the FNO, please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number. Amber Acree, DOC 755530. Thank you. Let me explain the process to you. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participant who have indicated to speak to have their input. Just real quick, we have two who are here in support. We have Ms. Allison Gray, sister, who will be speaking. And we have Mr. Bruce Acree, um, who is the father who will not be speaking, but is here in support. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, Ms. Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is the case for Amber Acree, DOC 755530, date of birth, October 19, 1988, classified as a first felony offender, offense, cruelty to juveniles, sentencing date, October 12, 2020, revoked on June 23, 2021. Sentence to four years hard labor. Parole date is May 26, 2022. Good time, October 20, 2022. Full term is May 27, 2025. Is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Pearl. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Pearl Wise, and I have been assigned your case today. That means that um, I'll be asking, doing the initial interview, and my colleagues may have some questions as well. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? All right. All right. Um, I read uh, everything that was given to us. This is something else. What's going on with you, young lady? Um, during when this offense uh, occurred, I was uh, battling bipolar depression. And so my anger kind of got the best of me at the time. And since then I've been placed on bipolar medication and I was seeing a counselor before I got incarcerated. And since I've been incarcerated, I've been um, put on new medication, which has been working tremendously better than my previous medication. So I'm not having any kind of outburst or um, you know mood swings like I was having before. All right, that's good to hear. That is really, really good to hear. Um, the records uh, I have show that you have 14 years of education and you're the, and you're the mother of two children. Is, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that education. Uh, I did some college. I was in uh, school for accounting. What, what college were you at? I uh, went to Bipsy and I also went to LSUS. Okay. And uh, what are the ages of your children? Uh, 15 and four. Oh, okay. So, okay. Who has the 15 year old? Her, she lives with her father. Okay. So you didn't have custody of the 15 year old? Uh, she wanted to live with her father. Okay. 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 And if you were successful today, what are your plans? Where would you live and how would you support yourself? Um, I have my own home. Uh, it's one of my father's rent houses, but he allows me to live there. Okay. Um, and I would immediately get a job. I'm a waitress, so I feel like I would be able to find a job pretty quickly because a lot of places are hiring right now. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and long term past that, what are your plans? Um, I'd like to find a career um, and stay out of trouble for sure. Um, but, you know, associate with good people that will mm -hmm. keep me on track. Mm -hmm. so. so, but before it's an occupation, you, have, you haven't thought that for her? Huh? I'm a waitress, so I plan on waiting tables. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because I, I looked where uh in in the uh, fingerprint thing you had applied for you did prints in uh 2013, 2014, 16, and 18 for different employments. Was that with the city of Shreveport? What was uh, that? I'm not a hundred percent sure. You don't remember. It. You don't remember. Okay. You had uh you're okay, I understand that. Now uh you know that Arkansas, there is a warrant out for you in Arkansas. Yes, ma'am. I plan on taking care of that. Okay. okay. They don't have a detainer on you, so which means that you, you know you should be able to get released. But at, at this time, at, at the time probation parole wrote this record, they didn't have a detainer on you uh, because they don't extradite more than, more than 200 miles. So, so yes, what, what you plan on? What, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. I would plan on taking care of that whenever I get out. You're going to go and turn yourself in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, is, the records I have show that your uh, Dustin has full custody of your four-year-old. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So you have, so you, the fathers have custody of both of your children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what programs have you taken? Uh, I'm in a living in balance program currently. Okay. And I'm a trustee here. I work uh, in the laundry department. Okay. Okay. Good. They don't offer a whole lot here for women. So. Okay. Okay. Good. But you got your mental health taken care of. How often yes. are you seeing somebody? Um, every, about a, once a month, I believe I speak to the psychiatrist. Okay, good. That's good. That's good. Because uh, we, uh, Department of Corrections uh, do an assessment, do a needs assessment, and you are high in those areas of mental health and antisocial thinking. Uh, so that's, it's really important that you stay engaged there. Yes, and, uh, and I want to inform you, uh, there's nothing you can do about it, but as part of this process, we reach out to the law enforcement community to get their opinions about early release. And there's a lot of opposition. And those are factors that we look at it in trying to reach our decision. Yes. But I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing well. Because when I was reading last night, I'm I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing as well as you are. It's good Thank to see. You. All right. Thank That's you. all I had, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roche, I see you have your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Marabella. Good morning, Mr. Green. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Mr. Cream, I'm really concerned. This is not your first rodeo. Uh, looking at your arrest record, you have violence all through your arrest mm -hmm. record. Uh, a felony, improper telephone communications, simple battery, uh, theft, uh, improper telephone communications, simple battery, disturbing the peace, obstruction of a public passage, uh, stalking, it goes on and on, simple assault, cruelty to a juvenile. You need some programming. I really want to help you this morning because you have a short time and I think we would be remiss if we wouldn't give you the help that you need. I think you need an anger management program. Mm -hmm. I think you need a victim awareness. So you will realize when you're stalking someone or you are assaulting someone, mm -hmm. what it does to that victim. And I'd like to see you get a hundred hours pre-release and you're not going to get it where you're housed now. So I'm thinking about granting you upon completion of an anger management program, yes, sir. a victim awareness program, and a hundred hours pre-release, which will give you sort of uh, a, a, a overall programming on 10 different areas. Yes, sir. What do you think about that? Um, I think that's better than being here. And my sister has actually looked up anger management classes and has a list of places for me to take that class and a parenting class. So that is in my plans to do if I get released. But, but I think we need to do as a panel, need to give you that help before you release 
and then you can enter some other programs that is not covered when you release. Okay. We'd like to give you as much ammunition as possible so when you get released, you'll stay out. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Ms. Teresa. We have one participant that would like to speak, Ms. Allison Gray. Ms. Gray, if you'll unmute your microphone and tell us uh, what it is you'd like us to hear, please. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say over the last five and a half months, um, I feel like my sister has grown um, more emotional and she's become just more adult. Um, before she was able to not really handle a lot of situations, but over the last five and a half months, I feel like she's grown a lot. We weren't really close before, but since she's been incarcerated, we have grown together tremendously. Um, I do feel like that medication that she's on now is starting to work and you know she's just a lot better on that medication. Um, I've already called and spoke to um, Terry um, at a behavioral thing in uh, Bossier and I've already got her all set up and enrolled and approved through Medicaid for some classes for her to take. One of them is a battered um, awareness for victims and it does touch on um, the victims and parenting as well. Another class is anger management. Um, I've also gotten the steps to take for her to go see her doctor when she's released to get a prescription for this new medication that she's been taking in jail. Mm -hmm. um, and also we were talking about getting her some counseling outside whenever she gets out. Um, I feel like those steps would help her tremendously. I feel like she's got a lot better of a support system now because she has grown emotionally a lot more. So she does have a lot more people in her corner to be here for her and to support her. Thank you very much, Ms. Gray. We appreciate your comments. Uh, is there anyone there from Caddo that could tell us a little bit about oh, how uh, she's doing? You need no. to unmute your microphone. Okay. All right. Now we can hear you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Rick Ferris. I'm the jail commander here. And we've not had any issues with her. Just as she stated, uh, she's one of our inmate workers and uh, is doing an excellent job with that. No issues at all with her. No reports or anything. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you okay. very much, sir. Uh, at this time, I recommend executive session uh, after we hear her statement. Okay, there's been a request for executive session. Uh, Ms. Teresa, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Marabella? Yes. Ms. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Roche? Yes. We will be in executive session to discuss some confidential matters. As soon as we finish that, we'll return to our hearing. I don't think it's hard. Well, this format is definitely different. I tried finding information on what she had done and uh, nothing pops up. The only thing I can find is, is this, which is her booking picture. So she certainly seems to be doing better with a little bit of jail time. Um, I think, I think cruelty to juvenile, it can come in a lot of ways. I mean, it could be, it could be neglect. It could be, 
probably like if you have uh, a lab that going on in your house and they're there, I mean, there's probably a lot of different charges you can, you can make, but obviously she has a major addiction problem and you know, it, it doesn't seem like she tried to get by. She's like, Oh yeah, my sister found uh, programs for me to take outside. And so she's like, no, I, th I think you need to do it here. And maybe they're disgusting. If they'll send her to Steve Hoyle, but Let's see. Yes, sir. He's on the. He's gone. No, sir. I apologize for that. That's all. That's all right. Uh, Ms. Cree, is there anything you'd like to say before the panel votes? Um, I would just like to thank y'all for giving me this opportunity. Um, I would like a second chance to do right, and I promise I'm going to do everything that I can. I just want to get my child back and be a good mom to her, to both of my kids. Thank you very much, Ms. A. Creek. Is the panel ready to vote? Yes, we are. Ms. Wise? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Ms. Amber, that, that's very disturbing to me to hear you say you want to try to get your child back. That's very disturbing to me. Your, 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 uh, reassess that. But today, my vote is to deny your parole because of the proximity of the good time day your poor supervision history, you have law, strong law enforcement opposition, you have high needs that have not been addressed and you lack programs. So my vote is to, is to uh, deny. You will get a second chance. It's, it's a matter of you deciding what you're gonna do with that second chance. I'm glad to hear that you're taking your medication. Please continue to do that. And just take care of you. Your kids are in a good place. You just take care of you. That is my vote, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Roche? You're on mute, Mr. Roche. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Creek, I see an individual who has an anger management problem who is in need of additional programs. You're not going to get the programs at the facility that you're housed at. And the only way I can get you moved is to grant you your early release upon the completion of anger management, victim awareness, and 100 hours pre-release. Yes, sir and get you transferred to a facility that offers all three of those programs. After completing those programs, you will get some good time. And probably be an automatic release after completing those programs. That is my decision. The conditions after release, you have to have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. You are to keep up with your mental health medication and get a mental health evaluation whenever needed. Yes, sir. That is my decision. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Ms. A. Cree, uh, I am very concerned about your history and and the, the the previous offenses, uh, they are very concerning to me. Uh, I agree, frankly, with both of the things that both of my colleagues have said. And I will tell you, square up. If you weren't getting out in a year, I'd deny you, because I think you probably need to stay in jail a little longer. But you're not, you're getting out within the next year. So I believe the best I can do for you is to make sure that you try to get some programs that will help you. Uh, you have some wonderful support from your sister who uh, very honestly said, y'all have not been close until very recently. And I assume I know why that is. 
So I hope that you take advantage of this opportunity. I have some real serious concerns about you. Uh, I'm very pleased that you're taking medication that might assist with your concerns. Uh, so my vote today is going to be to grant conditionally, just as Mr. Roche said, with the same conditions and under the same circumstances that you complete victim awareness, anger management, and 100 hours of pre-release. Mr. Mr. Roche, with your permission, I would add uh, as a condition that she, in addition to getting a mental health eval, she get a substance abuse evaluation as well, just to see if there's anything else that needs to be done. Uh, that would be my vote, uh, Ms. Uh, Acree, uh, to grant conditionally. Uh, two thirds votes carries, is it? Uh, Okay. Mr. No, 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 it does not. It does it not? Does, okay. It does not. Well, you would needed a unanimous vote today and you did not get it, so your parole has been denied. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Maribel, I believe we're ready to close out at Cato. Man, I do not miss those mask days. Do you remember that? I was just thinking, gosh. Uh, it just wasn't such a long time ago, but at the same time, it was a lifetime ago. This, this hearing took place November 16th, 2021. Wow. Um, you know, from what Miss Wise said, this was not just uh, the throw in charge. She did something awful. Who knows what? And it could have been even uh, sexual in nature. Could have been something she was doing with another. You know, we we've still sometimes dropped these charges to indecent behavior with the to cruelty instead of um, instead of indecent behavior, and. Uh, that's just sick. I mean, nothing would surprise me anymore with Louisiana, but when Miss Wise said that really concerns me, then that's what I'm thinking it was. It was probably, I mean, just speculation, but that would be my guess. And that is, that is disturbing. Uh, you know, what Mr. Roche and Mr. Mirabella were trying to do was to say, you know what, I'd rather let you out with restrictions. And Miss Wise just said, no, I don't want to even let you out. I'm, uh, uh, I'm kind of, I like the idea of, you know, just not letting out, but I hear the restrictions thing too, since it's just one year. Why it's just one year? Well, the system's broken. Um, well, I get, I don't know. We haven't seen her come back yet on a, that I'm aware of on a revocation hearing. So maybe she's doing okay. Um, but anyways, what do you think of this new format? It's it's kind of interesting seeing our uh, our Mr. Roche uh, so close up and also in a different phase in his, I guess, uh, recovery. And um, also, Miss Y, it's just so interesting. Anyways, uh, I'm glad that they don't do that slow, boring, monotone voice intro anymore. They got rid of that because that was just ridiculous. It's like. Welcome to the Louisiana Parole Board hearing. Because I'm doing an announcement, I need to talk like a robot because that's just total common sense. Anyways, with that, I'll let you go.